The video that I put up earlier talking about fungus and cold weather, wet crop losses, demonetized by YouTube. So let's get into it. Australia showing a trend of grand solar minimum intensification as well. Let's start back in their summer, humid and wet conditions. Where did I see that before? Also, macadamia nut crop revised down to 47,000 tons from 54,000. Darwin's coldest night, 5 degrees Celsius below average for this time of the year. Victoria breaking a 50-year cold record at Mount Hotham. But notice how the line is actually off the chart. And with the grand solar minimum, you're going to see more pests moving around the planet. Here we go. Tomato, potato, psyllid. Decreasing yields on tomatoes, potatoes, capsicum, chili, eggplants, and sweet potato crops. And hey, I didn't know there was a mouse plague in Australia two months ago. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and click that bell so you can stay subscribed and get the latest updates. And this video is brought to you by foodforliberty.com forward slash adapt 2030 heirloom vegetable seed kit enough to grow 10 acres. You can save those seeds and then replant for the next year. Check out the link below in the description box. Now I know it's winter in the southern hemisphere, but I wanted to start back into the summer to show a trend moving forward. Central Australian lettuce farm recovers after a horrific summer. They're finally getting back to temperatures and humidity that they can grow lettuce again. And what's most interesting is it was too humid and too wet during the summer. Same thing I talked about in the demonetized video about California with the wheat crop and also with the barley. And what was so damaging was the worst humidity, the amount of water vapor in the air, cosmic ray increases. And also yesterday, massive hailstorms swept through Western Australia, damaged about 10% of the standing crops. Wheat, not too bad, only about 10% damaged. Macadamia nut tonnage decreased down to 47,000 tons from 54,000 tons due to too much rain. They actually talk about the impact of extreme weather. And this makes me think, okay, we're forecasting a grand solar minimum to usher in extreme weather based on cosmic ray increases and also changes to our magnetosphere, which is going to bend our jet streams, not CO2. And here we get perfect examples on the exact timeline of intensification for the grand solar minimum. Wait until next year. That's the real amplification. So they're looking at roughly a 20 to 30% yield drop from last season. Jump up to Darwin. And when I say up, I mean up toward the equator, up in the north of Australia. Five degrees Celsius below average temperatures for this time of the year. And I wanted to note also the second part of the blue, the hottest August on record based on maximum temperatures. That's great. But why are you not talking about min, low, min temperature records being broken? It's such a just focus on heat through the weather zone. So I decided to focus on low min temperatures that were broken. 50 year record broken this week, Victoria, Mount Hotham. It was actually so cold that you see that red line that's off the chart and it was cooler prior to Monday. These are their readings from Sunday reaching apparently minus 10.3 at some stations. This is what I got here so far. Coldest one I saw was minus 9.3 and into Monday even minus 7.5, minus 7.8. That is definitely off the chart low there. And with this grand solar minimum intensification, there's gonna be migrations of insects, animals, birds, which we've already seen all these specifically birds in strange places this year. Now we start to see something that was in New Zealand making its way up to Australia. Rather quirky on the timing on this. Could have happened last year, could have happened the year before because these tomato potato psyllid have been in New Zealand since 2006, but they just suddenly decide this year to move north to warmer climates. Hmm, interesting about that. When the world's planned to go into a cooler climate, so means New Zealand's gonna get colder, so is Tasmania. So they talk about the incursion of this pest as being inevitable into the East Coast. And these types of psyllids target tomatoes, potatoes, capsicum, chili, eggplant, and sweet potato. And the number one thing about this pest, decreased yields and decreased quantity. They actually affect 
the chemical makeup of potatoes and tuber crops. Potatoes, they call it the zebra chip. And notice the word zebra chip. I'll come to that in just a second. These are the tomato psyllid. They put this excess white sap that's very difficult to remove inside the plant cellular structure, which becomes a pathogen, and it's also on the outside. Specifically on tomatoes, it talks about the fruit yield and the development stages, small fruit and misshapen. Those are difficult to sell. And if the yield's not there, the tomato industry is going to be decimated across Australia. Same with the potatoes. They're talking about plants actually collapsing prematurely and then the tubers themselves, when they come out, they don't form one large potato. They break off and form several smaller potatoes. And this grand solar minimum crop loss is not going to be one gargantuan loss across the planet at the exact same time. It's going to be exactly what this is. Incremental crops being lost that then will need to be substituted from other places. And when those other places go offline to growing, that's when we get into the food price rises. Interesting to note, this pest was first brought into New Zealand in 2006. It hadn't moved since 2006. It didn't make it into Australia. But then suddenly this year, it gets into Australia. But suddenly, this winter down there has been exceptionally cold in Australia, and a lot of animals, insects, are feeling these changes as the grand solar minimum intensifies. Now back to the zebra chip. The psyllids, they place a disease inside the potato plant. Now with the naked eye, it's not really visible, but when you do process, let's say, potato chips in a factory, you get this, what they call zebra chip. The infected potato chips take on this striped pattern. They're very difficult to cook. They burn. They have a bitter flavor, but don't worry. There's no health risk to this. With the consumption of infected potatoes from these psyllids, not a problem. And then the related articles off this story, already Australia is seeing economic damage. Outbreak stalls capsicum export. And the psyllid controls a trade halt, a circus. So insects and birds are going to start migrating and moving to different locations on the planet. So when we start to see the pop-ups and outbreaks of these different pests, which we're seeing globally right now, this is just a result of them feeling the electromagnetic changes that are intensifying that we as humans are picking up on, but we're not reacting to in the way they are yet. So when you see a strange bird, like they just saw in the UK, something from North America that had never been seen, not even the last 600 years of bird watching through the UK, and also running down pests in Australia, I didn't know two months ago they had a mouse plague. Because I've heard of this in the United States as well. These mice and different rodents are making their way into the cities and into the suburbs because of not enough food. And I like how they say, well, these areas are experiencing areas of significantly higher mouse activity than normal. And they actually had to replant because the damage from the mice. Again, there's another thing to contend with, with the destruction of crops. These pests that we normally can control, when they're migrating to different areas, they're out of control. So I didn't know how many mice there really were. And then it said the abundance of mice is similar to the mouse plague of 2010 and 11. And I didn't know anything about that either. So I just quickly looked over mouse plague, Melbourne, rodent population booming in the city. And they have all these articles talking about the mouse plague in South Australia, Victoria, and then periphery areas that are just getting dots of mice, if you will. Grain farmers are having a difficult time. They're absolutely going insane with the losses. So back to 2011, you need to watch this video on YouTube. It is unbelievable how many mice there really are. It's something like this, but over an entire part of a country. Now, I know the winters curtailed this a bit, but if this is the trend with the weather, next year is going to be just as wet with bountiful conditions for the mice. So you could expect another mouse plague coming again next year. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Australia is already starting to show the grand solar minimum weather changes in the effects of the climate. I do believe this time the Southern Hemisphere is leading the Northern Hemisphere by one season. So the changes we see with the intensity ramp up will show first in the Southern Hemisphere. And as always, if you found any value in this video, please support me on PayPal or my Patreon account. I'll keep bringing more videos like these, as well as the weekly podcast where I talk to others who are discussing the grand solar minimum and the way our society is going to move in the future. And if you think the economy and the saber rattling 
in the politics across this planet are at a crazy level right now, you see nothing yet at all is intertwined with the grand solar minimum intensification. And as we get into the food price rises, which will cause riots on the street and civil unrest, you're going to watch all these periphery areas with the economy, politics, go to uber levels that you didn't think were possible.